In September 2014, six students from our school were invited to the International Student Leaders Conference at Beecham College in Leicester, England. The topic for the conference was learning for leadership in the future. The conference week gave students from Sweden, Germany, England and Norway the possibility of using workshops, discussions, lectures and excursions as a means of collaboration. At Nordal Grieg Upper Secondary School, we are grateful to be part of this cooperation. And the coming autumn, we intend to send another student delegation to BCHEM College and the next conference. Today's opening lecture is presented by Executive Principal Hugh Howe from BCHEM College, who our students met and became acquainted with during the conference last year. Elisa, Rangnell, Tobias, Andrea, Nicolas and Susanne from Nordal Grieg wanted fellow students in Norway to hear Mr. Howe's thoughts about the challenges their generation will face in the future. We are honored to present Mr. Hugh Howe from Beecham College. May we wish you a warm welcome to Nordal Grieg Upper Secondary School and our conference about the future. Good morning, Nordal Greg. Can't hear you. Thank you very much. This has been deliberately designed so that having spent maybe an hour on your butts, listening in Norwegian and seeing a number of films, you have an opportunity to think and listen in English. This is designed to be so. Can I apologize for my lack of Norwegian, but thank you for your very warm welcome and for the fact that for the next 30 minutes or so, you'll be listening and thinking in English. So to the principal and to the staff, thank you very much for a warm welcome. <laughs> the link between our schools are strong and it is a privilege for me to be here today. What I'd like to share with you are some thoughts about leadership. And as the leader of a school, like your leader of your school, there are many important aspects of what we do that I believe fundamentally are transferable. And I hope this morning to share with you some of those things that I hope that you, the next generation, can embrace and use. So let's look at some of these aspects as we focus on leadership. We will have failed you, not by providing a fantastic building like this or school, but we will have failed you if we do not help you to be educated and ready as the next generation. That we leave for you a legacy which is important. And so for the next three days, your conference is focusing on the ways in which doors can be opened for you, but it is up to you to embrace those challenges and opportunities. The future is with you, not with me, not with your staff and your teachers, not even with your parents. The future is with you, the next generation. So, who am I? I have had the privilege to lead four different schools in the UK. My current school is very much like your school, dealing with youngsters in the age range of 14 to 19 years old. And I'll say a little bit more about the school in a moment. I've worked in many different schools, challenging, tough inner city schools, where children don't want to go to school, I've worked in schools where children are expected not to achieve the national norms. That because of their class, because of their background, because of their challenges, because of social issues, do not perform well. I've also worked in schools that are very, very successful, producing some of the very top students in the country. 
I'm described as a national leader in education and in 2004 had the privilege of meeting the Queen and receiving an honour for the work that I've done in education. And whilst that is in itself a privilege, you will note I've dressed exactly the same for you as I have for the Queen. I was not born in the UK. I'm Jamaican by birth. Yes, good cheer. I'm Jamaican by birth and therefore know what it's like to experience the challenges and the issues of another country, another language and opportunities. Apart from my work, I have a wife who's also here in, in Norway with me and four daughters. I know what it's like to be loved by women, but also at times to be challenged by the demands that the women make of me. This is my school in England. Like you, it's non-uniformed. It is a very large school, over 2,000 students on the campus. They are creative, they're dynamic, and like you, the future is theirs. It is a very successful school. In the top 3% of all secondary schools in the country, we spend some 10 million pounds every year on the education. Nearly 350 of our students go on to universities, including the top two universities in the UK of Oxford and Cambridge. And every year we get part of a national, international student conference to which your students last year were able to come to Beecham. Part of our challenge to our youngsters at Beecham is to be part of the picture. And that's part of the challenge for you and this conference, your future, to be part of the future, to embrace that future as much as you can. So, that's a little bit about me. Who are you? Who are you as learners? Are you a rock? Maybe not. Well, let's define what a rock is. A natural mineral. A hard, hard component. Does not absorb things. Water, the elements, rushes over it, brushes over it. May shape it, but a rock is hard. Are you rock-like in your character? Are you rock-like in your determination? Or is it, are you more like a sponge? A sponge is also a natural material. But when wet, it absorbs and take on liquid. In your character, are you able, through education, through opportunities, to absorb the learning, to absorb ideas, to reflect them, and to do something with them. So the challenge this morning is for you to think through, rock-like or sponge-like in character. I think almost anyone universally will know and appreciate some of what Nelson Mandela stood for. But he used some very famous words, not his own words, but words that he'd borrowed from someone else. And maybe that is part of the clue that I'm trying to get you to appreciate and understand. The sponge-like character. Here are some of the words that he used. And maybe this was directed exactly to you. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. You, the next generation, powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, to be gorgeous, talented, fabulous? Actually, 
Who are you not to be so? You're a child of God. Your plain small doesn't serve the world. There's nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We're all meant to shine as children do. We were born to manifest the glory of God that is within us. It's not just in some of us, it is in everyone. And as we let our light shine, we unconsciously give others permission to do the same. When liberated from our own fears, our presence automatically liberates others. Who are you not to be gorgeous, talented, and fabulous? And we challenge you, the next generation, to be all of those things. There's no need for you to be arrogant, to be big-headed. But your plain small will not help us, this society, or this world. So my argument is about absorbing things, learning from others. To be good, to be great, you need to learn from others, to have the right tools, and to have a recipe for success. This has nothing to do with education. This writer looks at businesses, Jim Collins. And what he says is that leaders are essential during primitive transitional years. This is a transitional year for you. Young adults, the next generation, the next generation of leaders, of workers, of carers, you have a responsibility to embrace some of these. To be ambitious, to work for success, a quest for sustainable results, taking responsibility without a blame culture. So whose fault is it that the world is in the state that it's in now? Not mine, nothing to do with me. But I could do something about it. So can you. Leadership is defined in this way for me. It's a process. It's influencing activities and an individual or a group. And it's working towards a goal and a given situation. You don't have to be the principal of the college to be in a leadership position. Each and every one of you are leaders in your classrooms. You lead learning. And if that is about your own learning, then that sense of leadership in itself is important and is credible. Just look at these examples. Leadership talks about a vision. Talking about doing things differently. Having no fear. That was taken from the Bible. As a Christian, having a faith, maybe not. But we can learn from a different context. We can learn from faiths. We can learn from some of the greatest thinkers. Mathematicians, scientists. There are transferable ideas that we can work through. We can learn from somebody as humble as Rosa Park. An elderly black woman who sat on the bus in Montgomery, Alabama and refused to move to the back where blacks are supposed to be. Sparked the civil rights movement. Not a name that we automatically associate as a leader, but the part that she played in refusing to move, in refusing to accept the status quo, is important. Leaders are optimistic. Leaders bring about contribution from other people. 
to make others combine and work together. Leadership, according to Tony Blair, who was once our Prime Minister in the UK, is a poor, opportunism is a poor substitute for leadership. And what he's saying here is, leaders plan what they do. You have a plan for the next three days of your schooling, for this conference. Some of you may want to fast forward that and skip on to the weekend where you have plans to socialize. Plans for the future, your lives, your education, your family. It just doesn't happen. Leaders embrace that spirit of planning. I love this word. It's a Japanese word, kaizen. Kaizen. And what it says is that however good we are, there is always room for improvement. That no person, no process, Nothing is so complete that it's absolutely right and cannot be developed on. Kaizen. Learning from a different context. This is an industrial model. This is a model used for making cars. Each year we try and improve on the car, the design, the efficiency of the engine. What can we in education learn from this? What can we in our lives learn from this? We learn that there's always scope and room for improvement that you can develop you can move forward. In sport, we can learn from sportsmen and women. Butterflies, unsettledness. But another way to look at them is to get those butterflies to file in formation. The success of an individual is one thing. Working as part of a team with unity and a sense of purpose is important. If we're going to be successful, then unashamedly we need to have winners. And these are some of the unshakable qualities of winners. Look at this one in particular. The ability to perform and thrive under pressure. Pressure from your peers, pressure from society, from your family, an expectation. But the pressure is there. And to work it through in a possible, successful way, is what distinguishes the winners from the losers. A recipe for success. I think that these ingredients are there for everyone. Clear vision, knowing where you're gonna go, where you're gonna take others. Finding the path. Maybe also at times, taking risks. And that is something that leaders do, to assess the risk. But also learning, learning from others and learning all the times. I've not arrived. I don't go to work knowing that I know everything. I go to work sometimes knowing that I'm too, I'm going to learn. But let me just work this through with you and, and, and tell you a little story about this. That recipe for success is important. My wife and I had a fantastic meal last night in Bergen. We had a choice. And the restaurant that we went to, whilst not Michelin star, was eclectic, had its own menu. The chefs actually came out to describe to us the different parts of the meal that we were eating and how they came about creating it. They took time. It must have been over two hours worth of eating, not all the time, but a whole experience. That's what we chose. We had a choice. We could have gone down the road, 60 yards, and gone to a McDonald's, which is exactly the same as we've got at home, which is exactly the same of every McDonald's up and down the world, and be guaranteed a meal that was universally acceptable, cooked in a set way, in a set amount of time, with set ingredients, and produce very, very quickly. Any recipe will have common ingredients. What is different is the manner in which it's put together. Your recipe for success may be slightly different from mine, but as a leader, we will have 
common ingredients. And that is something worth embracing and holding on to. So leading in the future, the challenge for you going forward. The world that you will lead in will be even more complex than the world that we have now. And that might be difficult to uh, envisage, but it will be. Look at that phrase. Are you ready for a world of challenge, a world of ambiguity and adventure? That's taken from a recruitment advert for the CIA. It doesn't talk about the skills, the qualifications. It doesn't ask whether or not you're strong or weak. It doesn't ask whether intellectually you're challenged. It's looking for transferable skills. It's looking for the next generation to be able to cope with ambiguity, uncertainties, as well as challenge and adventure. Is that who you are? Is that part of the character and makeup that you have, that you will be developing? Because that's what the world needs in the future. Transferability of knowledge, of skills and experiences. And so for future leaders, you need to keep learning. You need to know what you stand for, what you believe in, what is right, what is wrong for you. You need to have a clear idea about your style of leadership and how the context that you lead in may change and may require you to change and develop. You need others around you. You need to engage with people. And part of that relates to the fact that we're part of teams. And those teams, in terms of communication, in terms of teamwork, and cooperation are all important. We have to balance I, me, as an individual, and we and us together. We can make a difference. I've been very fortunate in my career, and fortunate to be here with you today. But one of the things that I'm constantly doing is learning from you as young people and the people that I'm responsible for. And here are some of the things that they remind me about the future and about being a leader. Look at this second one. You cannot be a leader without being part of a team. Who are you going to lead? Yourself? Possibly. But let me go back to that earlier point. Your plain small doesn't serve the world. You have something to offer your society, your country, your world. Leadership is about helping little people make big differences. You heard from a colleague about the world and about the global challenges. Can you little people make big differences? What can you do to change the environment, the society, the world that we're part of? It is possible. And so my challenge to you, as it is to my students in Leicestershire, in England, is to be bold. Be bold. You are the future. Be proactive. Do the work and do it yourself. Take some responsibility for that future. Be optimistic. When we see around us elements of negativity and people treating people badly, let us also be optimistic to say that we can treat each other better than we do at the moment. Be energetic. Sitting back and hoping and wishing it's going to happen will not make it happen. Take some responsibility for that going forward.
And finally, there are any number of questions. Questions to ask me, your teachers, your leaders, your family. Questions to ask your society, your politicians. Questions to ask when you get the vote and you have an opportunity to quiz them about what you're doing for our world, our society, our people, our community. I said right at the start that you've been very patient and you've listened. Can I again thank you for your warm welcome and for reflecting. I'm here today in your college and will be privileged to lead a workshop and I hope very much the relationship that our two schools have will continue in the future. Thank you very much and enjoy your day. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's so interesting to listen to you. Thank you. Uh, we are looking forward to further collaboration with BTEM College. Thank you very much. Uh, two of our students will come up and, uh, and give you a few gifts. That is a cup with our vision to be daring brains in interaction and also Thank you very much. books. Thank you. Thank you. For children in the world. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure. You should enjoy this. Thank you very much. Thank you.